Hello students, my name is Neeraj Saxena and I welcome you to the course Basics of Transport Planning. A very interesting thing about transport is that common people find a direct connection with transport. For example, you as students would be commuting to university every day either by using private cars or public transport such as bus or trains. Now in this particular course, what we are going to teach you are the techniques which can help transport agencies come up with policies which can help you improve or make your travel more convenient and effective. So on that note, let's get started with the contents of this course. The very first thing is um, what an urban transport is, what, what, how it is defined. So the definition says that uh, it's a process which involves moving goods or people from one place to another in an effective and convenient manner. Transport forms an integral part of an overall development of a region as it not only contributes to the GDP of the region but also generates employment to people. The infrastructure that is involved in the transportation of a city includes roadways, trains, waterways, and for a wider regional connectivity, airways. Now, lately, transportation agencies across the globe have been experiencing problems such as traffic congestion, which is more cars on the network, higher number of private cars, uh, that are flying on the roads, the greenhouse gas emissions which includes carbon dioxide emissions, limited parking space, less use of transport, sustainable transport options such as bikes, bicycling and walking, and limited space for the development of future transport engineering projects. Such limitations um, are being experienced increasingly by the government agencies and the agencies need some answers for that. So the challenges as I discussed previously, the challenges that lie before transport agencies are as follows, that they need to propose accessible and sustainable transport alternatives and even forecast their demand. For example, if a city has to come up with a new bicycle, shared bicycle scheme, planners have to know, want to know what will be the rate, what will be the acceptability of such an alternative among uh, commuters and how beneficial would it be in maintaining the overall uh, balance of the entire road network. The second is assess the impact of traffic mitigation measures on the overall network performance of road network. I'll elaborate this thing with the help of an example. Uh, traffic mitigation measures for example, congestion pricing. Now, congestion pricing is a concept, is an idea which asks people to pay some extra amount if they have to use or if they have to commute into the CBD of an area. Another congestion mitigation measure is tolls. We have certain tolls that are being applied, that are being levied on the motorways. Now, what is that? It, it is being done just to avoid a heavy volume of cars using that particular road. So by putting a pricing on that road, we maintain the level of the cars which will ensure that we get a smooth running traffic all throughout the day. And lastly, planners also need to do benefit cost ratio or benefit cost analysis of several transportation alternatives. So for example, whether to increase two lanes on a motorway or to increase four lanes on an arterial road, which alternative would be beneficial for the overall network performance. So planners have to answer such questions um, on a day-to-day -day basis and that is why there is a motivation that there is a need to develop models which can help them answer all these questions that we just discussed. Now, giving a brief overview about what a model is. So model is an abstraction of reality, where reality is nothing but um, what is the real world transport network, how does a real world transport network look like. Um, there are two kinds of models, one is an abstract model, the other one is a physical model. 
A physical model is where you actually build all the um, infrastructure in place and then see what are the what are the um, impacts if we make any alteration in the network. We also use abstract models which are heavily used uh, in transport planning. Now these abstract models are a mathematical representation of um, the overall network characteristic which not only includes uh, road geometry but also includes travel behavior such as the mode choice or the time of departure. For example, a very simple abstract mathematical model is speed. We know how to calculate speed. It is distance by time. Now, this speed can help us understand if we plot, if we build a model in which we just represent speed on all the roads which are there in a road network, we can get a good representation. How does a speed fluctuate over different roads in a network? So that's what an example of a very simple mathematical abstract model that is P that we discussed. But we use much more advanced techniques so as to answer more complicated questions that we discussed in the previous slide. Now this point uh, brings me um, to go further into the discussion and I will talk about a very widely used modeling technique that is used in transportation across the globe. That model is called the four-step model. Now, throwing some light on the four-step model, it's a widely used modeling paradigm as I discussed, which is used in urban planning, urban transport planning across the globe. It involves predicting the demand that is, how many people are going to use a road network and then the resulting travel times and the resulting congestion due to that demand coming onto the road network is what we can answer through a four-step model. If I show you a quick layout of how a four-step model looks like, it comprises of four steps, trip generation, trip distribution, mode choice and traffic assignment. I will be briefly going through each of these steps in the slides to come. Let's talk about trip generation. So trip generation is determining how many people actually want to move out or come into a piece of land. So when we call a piece of land, which I will now talk as traffic analysis zone or TAZ, it's a piece of area in which we have few people living, either in the form of residences or we have some office spaces, which can probably bring people from other parts. Right? For example, Take a suburb in your city, consider that suburb as a traffic analysis zone. Now what trip generation does is, it finds out what are the productions and attractions from that particular zone. I'll explain this thing with the help of a visualization. So consider this is a suburb which has some residences and offices in it. We figure out how many people are moving out from this zone, which we determine as a function of the number of houses in that particular zone. On the other hand, we determine how many people are coming into this particular zone, which is attractions, which is a function of how many offices or shopping complexes do we have in that particular TAZ. So this is how we determine productions and attractions and the method, the technique that we use to find productions and attractions is statistical analysis, which mainly involves linear regression. The next step is trip distribution, which is given that we have found out that there are 10,000 people who want to move out of that suburb, where are these people going to? So trip distribution focuses on distributing productions and attractions among several TAZs that we have. It leads to a formation of an origin destination matrix, which I'll explain with the help of a visual. So it's the same TSE, and let us assume that there are three other zones where people are traveling to. Now this will transform into an OD matrix, which looks in a matrix form where each row represents the origins and each column represents the destination. So if we assume that number of people, if there are T1, trips or T1 people that are moving between TAZ to zone 1, it is represented by T1 and similarly for T1, zone 2 and 3. 
Now, this equality holds. We ensure that the total number of people who are moving out from this particular zone is equal to the production of that traffic analysis zone. And the technique we use to determine each and every cell of this matrix is through the gravity model. The third step of four-step model is the mode choice, where we determine, where we have to figure out um, what are the different modes that these people are taking while moving from one zone to another. There are different choices that can be actually studied in mode choice, which not only includes mode choice, but also includes route choice as well as the departure time. Now, I'll again give an example with the help of a visualization. Consider Homer Simpson, and he's confused that if he has to travel from his TAZ to zone 2, which mode should he take for his travel? Either he can go with car, train, bus, or other options that are available to him. Now, this is just an illustration of the mode choice. There could be a similar illustration for route choice as well as the time of departure for the same person, Homer Simpson. The last step is traffic assignment, probably the most interesting part of it because this is the step where whatever demand that we have estimated so far is finally applied or loaded onto the supplies which is our roadway, roadway network. Now, this step involves predicting congestion. So what happens when there are 2,000 people who are traveling on a road network where the traffic congestion is going to be, where the bottlenecks will going to be, and what will be the resulting travel time when this demand actually comes on the road network. So there are several interesting things that we can do. In this particular visual, we are seeing how traffic behaves on an intersection. So we can see that there is a big queue here. People are, the cars are waiting because um, the signal is red at the moment. Once it turns green, the cars will move and they will probably have to wait um, for long, which increases their delay time. Now, planners can actually look at this video, which is current situation, and then come up with some schemes which can help in reducing the delay. Now, what you are seeing in this visual is one of the modeling techniques, which is a microscopic model, which is um, represented by this video, but there are other techniques as well, which are macroscopic and macroscopic modeling for traffic assignment. So this was a quick overview about the four-step model. I'll finish my discussion with that. And if there are any questions, feel free to email me at my email address, and I'll be happy to respond to your questions. Thank you.